Cimarron Tavern, gateway to the Old West. Ride with Star Travis, Federal Scout, and Randy Martin on the trail of high adventure. Yesterday at Cimarron Tavern, a man dressed in the uniform of a captain of the United States Cavalry covered a bet in a card game with his saber. This so enraged Ma Buford that she paid the wager herself and drove the man from the Cimarron Tavern compound. Taking the saber into the tavern, Ma and Pa Buford made a startling discovery. That man's a disgrace to the uniform of the Army, Pa. Wagering his sword in a gambling game. Yeah, no good soldier do a thing like that. Well, he won't get it back. He's unworthy of it. He needn't come poking around here to get it back, either. Mm, it's a mighty fine-looking saber. Yes, it is. Got gold on the hill, see? Yeah, it is gold, ain't it? Say, ain't that writing on the blade? Huh? I didn't notice that. What does it say, Ma? Well, let me see. Captain Randy Martin, U.S. Army. What? Say that again. That's what it says, Captain Randy Martin, U.S. Army. It's there just as plain as day. Well, that's Randy's name. That's his name, all right. What do you think, Ma? I don't think. I know. Pa, huh? this saber belonged to Randy's father. You suppose so? Of course it was his. Couldn't be nobody else. But Randy's folks was killed on the trail by Indians more than five years ago. How'd that cavalry captain get hold of it? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Well, how are you going to find out? That fellow won't be coming back here after the tongue lashing you gave him, Ma. Well, I know who can help us find out. Have you forgotten that one of the most famous scouts of the West is making Cimarron Tavern his stopping place? You mean Star Travis? Morning, Star Travis. Oh, he wants folks to call him plain Star Travis. Anyway, what, what makes you think that he could help us find out about the saber? I don't say he can, but I'm going to show it to him and find out if he can help it. What you doing with that saber? I'm putting it on me. There. How do I look at it, Ma? Huh? Now, you take that saber right off, Pa Buford. This is no time to be up to foolishness. I always thought that I'd make a good officer in the Army. Always did want to wear spurs and tote a saber like this. <laughs> Gives a man dignity, don't it? Sometimes I think you need something to give you dignity, Pa. The very idea. Now, you take that saber off right this minute. All right, all right. Don't rush me. Randy and Morning Star Travis are down at the stables now, bedding down their horses. Well, they ought to be back by now, seems to me. Well, they're not back. And I want them here right now. You go get both of them. Ma, I don't think we ought to let Randy see this saber. That is, if it really did belong to his father, it might upset the boy. Randy's not easily upset. He's the one who can say for certain if it did belong to his father. Maybe he won't remember. All sabers look alike. Even if this one's got the name on it as it has. I said I wanted Randy to see it, and I'm going to show it to him. Now quit arguing with me, Pa Buford, before I lose my temper. Oh, no need to do that, Ma. I'll go get them. Don't you tell them anything about the saber. Let me do that when they get here. Understand? Yeah, I'll let you do the talking. You usually do. I'll be here waiting for you. Now get going. I'm going. Meanwhile, at the Cimarron Tavern stables, Star Travis, the government scout, and Randy Martin were getting acquainted as they fed and bedded down for the night the beautiful black horse Raven. Where'd you get Raven, Mr. Travis? You don't see horses like that out in this country. He's a Kentucky thoroughbred, Randy. When the government sent me out west, Raven was just a colt. I brought him along, trained him myself, and named him Raven. He's as slick and black as a raven, all right. Raven's a good name for him. You see, you named him after General Sam Houston, who was president of Texas? Yes. Well, Sam Houston's one of my heroes, Randy. Did folks call him Raven? Houston, I mean? Yes, the Indians gave him the name. You see, Randy, he lived with the Indians when he was a boy. You mean to say that the president of Texas lived with the Indians? He lived with them, and he was a member of the tribe. They gave him the Indian name of Raven because of his long black hair and flashing black eyes. 
Well, I wouldn't want to live with a bunch of Indians. They'd probably scalp me. Just like the Indians who killed my folks. I don't like Indians. Well, I can understand why you wouldn't, Randy. But just the same, you'll find there are good Indians and bad Indians. Just like there are good white men and bad white men. Color of skin has nothing to do with the goodness or badness of people, Randy. I still don't like Indians. Get over there, Chief. Oh, go ahead, boy. See, how do you like my horse? Oh, Chief's a good animal. He's a very intelligent one, Randy. I believe you said you wrangled him yourself. I sure did. Paul Buford and I saw him a couple of years ago. Back yonder in the foothills with a herd of wild horses. Yeah, how'd you catch him? They used to feed in a box canyon back there. We just bided our time. Used to practice sneaking up on the herd without them seeing us. We'd get on the off wind side of them. Then one day we got close enough to use a riata. Oh, a lasso, eh? Oh, steady, Raven, steady, boy. Well, you must have been pretty close to him. Within 30 feet. Knowing wild horses, I'd say you and Pa Buford were pretty good. Oh, Pa Buford's in stock just like an Indian. He knows all their tricks. Anyway, we had a right on this colt. He must have been about a year old then. We saw the herd moving down the canyon toward us. Pa and I were hiding back of a big boulder watching them come. Here they come, Randy. You got your rope ready? Yeah, Pa, I'm ready. How about you? I got my rope coiled and ready to toss. Now, don't miss this time, or we'll never get that cold. I won't. Here they come. They're coming. Steady, Randy. Steady. Throw it. Throw it. Here it goes. Hey, I got him. Hold him, Randy. Hold him. I can't hold him. I can't hold him. I'll get my rope on him. I can't hold it. There. Oh. There, we'll have to. He's throwing him off his feet. Uh, Sorry, Pa, don't let him get away. I'll hog tie him. Uh, look at him fight with you. Yeah. Hold that rope tight, Randy. I got a horse. He's mine. He's mine. No, we won't have him if you don't keep that rope tight. Uh, steady, boy, steady. What are you doing, Pa? I'm getting this rope on his forefeet. There you are, boy. Now, ease up on that rope. He's getting up. He's getting up. Well, he'll have to get up sometime, Randy. Now's as good a time as any. Well, what'll we do with him now? Just hold him steady for a while. <laughs> Oh, he's shaking all over. Well, he's scared now. Whoa, boy. Whoa, fella. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We ain't gonna hurt you. Steady, steady, steady. Jumping gophers. He's a beauty. As fine a piece of horse flesh as a man could want. Now let's talk easy like to him. See, he's quieting down, see? You better talk to him, Randy. He's gonna be your horse. Uh huh. Steady, boy. Steady now, fella. Steady there, boy. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Whoa, boy. So that's how you got Chief. Yes, sir. Pa and I talked to him for hours. Little by little, he quieted down. And late that day, we let him into the corral here at Simran Tavern. Who broke him to the saddle? I did. I couldn't ride him at first, of course. Oh, I imagine you couldn't. It'd take time. Not so much as you'd think. First, we had to gentle him to where we could get him into a stall. And then we had to teach him to eat oats. <laughs> He'd never eaten oats before. Now he's crazy about it. Well, after we got used to all that, Pa Buford put a halter on him. And I'd lead him all around the corral. In about a week or so after we got him, we put a gunny sack on his back. A gunny sack? Sure. A sack that grain came in. But it was empty, of course, and we put it on Chief's back the first time. Well, what did he do about that? Well, he didn't like it so much. He backed his ears, mean-like, and switched his tail trying to knock it off. <laughs> yeah, he had a lot of spirit, didn't he? Oh, plenty of spirit. But he got used to that. Easy there, boy, Chief. Easy, boy. Then Pa Buford and I started putting a few pounds of grain in the sack each day. We increased it each time until finally Chief was packing a 110-pound sack of grain. And he didn't pay any attention to it at all. Then came the saddle. Yep. Now, that's how we broke thoroughbreds when I was a kid in Kentucky, Randy. Take longer, but it's easier on horse and rider. Well, when we put the saddle on him, he didn't even know the difference. Then Pa Buford told me to get him the saddle. Easy, like. I'll bet he knew the difference then. <laughs> he sure did. And he didn't like it. He threw me. Hurt you? No, he didn't throw me hard. He just tipped me over his head. You know, he didn't even move out of his tracks. He just stood there looking at me. <laughs> he looked like he was laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I got right back on him again. That time I was watching him mighty close. I'd seen the cowboys ride bad horses. And I gripped my knees against him tight like they did. He bucked up a little and then he decided I wasn't going to hurt him. And since then, well, Chief's been my horse. Well, you and Pa Buford really know how to break a saddle horse. Why did you name him Chief? Uh, you said you didn't like Indian. Well, when Pa and I used to watch him with the herd before we roped him, he used to hold his head up high, proud-like. 
After we roped him and broke him, he still held his head as high and mighty as ever. Just like an Indian. You never saw an Indian with his head bowed down, did you, sir? That's right. The Indian has spirit, a spirit no one's ever been able to break. Mel Chief was like that, too. He had lots of spirit. And he still got it. Well, you see, Randy, you didn't break Chief. You just won him over to your side. You treated him kindly and you were fair to him. He soon learned to trust you. He had nothing to fear. So do you think Chief's a good name for him? Oh, you couldn't have named him better. Randy, you and I like horses. We're going to have a lot in common. I can see that now. Maybe your horse, Raven, is a better one than Chief because Raven's a thoroughbred. But Chief's a good horse just the same. You don't have to be ashamed of Chief. Maybe Chief and I can ride with you and Raven sometimes, huh? Why not? I'm going to be at Simmer and Tavern for quite a while, I think. Jumping gophers, imagine. Imagine what? Well, that I'll be able to get to ride alongside of Star Travis. Uh, I mean, Mr. Travis, the famous scout. Uh, Randy, let's have an understanding. An understanding? Yes. Now, you just call me Star. I'll call you Randy. It's much easier. Oh, but Ma Buford wouldn't stand for that. You're a lot older than I am. Ma Buford will say that's disrespectful. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do about that. When we're in the presence of others, call me Sir. Otherwise, Star. See, that's the way I talked to my father. He was a mean officer. Most of his men called him Sir, and so did I. When other people were around. Good. Then it'll be easy for you, won't it? Yes, Sir. That's Pa calling. Oh, he's calling both of us. Maybe supper's ready. Hey, Randy! Star Travis! Here we are, Pa, in the stable. Yeah, he seems excited about something. Oh, he does. Oh, here you are. Here you are. Come on, quick. Is something wrong, Pa Buford? Oh, there's plenty wrong. Come on up to the tavern right off. Ma sent for Boone, oh, yeah? What's happened? Can't tell you here. You both have got to come back up to the tavern. Come on. Well, I'll lock the stable gate. Jump and go for it, Pa. I can't imagine why all the hurry. I got them both, Ma. They was down, down to the stables. What's happened, Ma? Pa's all excited. He's got a reason to be excited, Randy. You and Morningstar, come here. You want me to? Yep. I got something to show both of you. Hey, where'd you get the sword? Randy, I want you to take a good look at this saber. There. Oh, where'd you get it? Never you mind where I got it. Take a good look at it. I'm looking. Say. Did you ever see it before, Randy? Sure, I've seen this saber before. Where'd you see it, Randy? My father wore this saber. It was his. I can tell by the gold on the grip guard right there. See? And there's his name written on the blade. That's why I sent for you and Morningstar Travis. I'll tell you where I got it. Now that Randy Martin has positively identified her who was slain while en route to a Western Army post, what part will Star Travis, the government scout, play in tracing it to the hand of the killer? In tomorrow's story of Simmerin Tavern, Randy will shed more light on the murder of his mother and father and his miraculous escape from the Slayer. You have heard the second chapter of the new daytime serial written by Felix Holt. Listen again tomorrow and every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Your announcer is Bob Height. Simran Tavern is directed by John Dietz for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.